offered for the intentions of Patricia Longo, the repose of the soul of Catherine Burke, the repose of the soul of Robert Sosa Sr., and for the intentions of the parishioners of St. Michael the Archangel Parish. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess, O Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. continued to grow. The Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. 
Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. And the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just an announcement or two before we get into the homily. This morning, the priest in the vicariate, the local area that we belong to, is the parish in the diocese, which is us. Casa Grande, Maricopa, Apache Junction, Coolidge, Eloy, and Florence. We were all on for the first time ever, Zoom, with the bishop. And it was interesting to find out how many of us had a lot to learn to get on Zoom. But we were all on Zoom with the bishop this morning. He wants to find out how everything was going in the parishes and everything, and give us some guidance as to what may be going on and that are in the future. When it came my turn to report, I managed to mention that we had gone from 40-something percent of the goal in the annual Catholic appeal during this time to 85 percent, which just blew him away. His mouth dropped to the floor and he said, tell your people that they are now my favorite people in the whole diocese. And he said, okay, Bishop, I'll do that. And then we were asking about these opening up because some dioceses around the country have started opening up public masses again. Found out that people in Tucson were driving to Las Cruces, New Mexico to go to mass. Phoenix is ahead of us in opening up because, as Bishop said, Maricopa County is 10 years younger on average than Pima County. So I don't know how that figures in there, but that was his excuse. But he said something's coming out this week Tuesday or Wednesday from him to explain how we're going to be opening up for public masses again and when. And he's mentioning the ascension as the, towards the end of the month as having that happen. So stay tuned for more news. And thank you for making us look so good in the annual Catholic appeal because of the lack of money, Bishop has already laid off 23 of the 50 people working in the chancery. So it hasn't been easy on him. One Sunday in church, the pastor said out loud in his sermon, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. And the congregation shouted, hey man, if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. And the congregation again shouted, hey man, if I had all the whiskey and rum in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. And the congregation shouted, hey man, then the pastor sat down and the deacon stood up and said, for our closing hymn, let's turn to page 126 of our hymn books and sing, we shall all drink from that river. And the congregation shouted, hallelujah. 
That is for all the deacons, because in our gospel today, we have the institution of the diaconate. But you know, if we could get a glimpse of the life in the first parish, it's in the first reading in Jerusalem soon after the resurrection. Three characteristics of the first parish that stand out, which can help us reflect on our own Christian identity even today. First, the community of believers is steadily growing. The church is a living body of believers in Christ, and living things are meant to grow. If a community of Christians isn't growing, something is wrong because ours is a missionary religion. Christ and his apostles to preach his word to all people. The church is meant to spread into every corner of time and space. In fact, the church has on its book a plan that if we are ever have aliens land from outer space, we'll be able to evangelize them. And we're the only religion that has that plan, by the way. That's our first characteristic, steadily growing. Second, there is a clear structure of authority in the Catholic community. The 12 apostles are its leaders, as Jesus intended. And they solve the new problem that arises by ordaining the first deacons. Today, as well, every Catholic community is organized with the same hierarchical structure. First, there is the Pope, the successor of St. Peter, leader of the 12 apostles. Then there's a local bishop, successor of these apostles. And there's the pastor of the parish, the bishop's representative for a specific area. None of them governed by their own authority. Rather, they receive their authority from Christ in the sacrament of holy orders. By obeying their leaders in matters of faith and morals, Christians are obeying Christ himself. Finally, at the very beginning of the church, we see that there are disagreements among believers. There is disunity and everything has to be worked for in unity. The Greek-speaking believers complain about being treated as second-class citizens and Christians. And this is the point I want to focus in on today. Our faith in Christ does not make us perfect right away. People think that when a priest gets or a guy gets ordained, he's perfect just like that. He's holy just like that. No! Grace builds on nature. If you're mean and nasty before ordination, you're going to be mean and nasty after ordination, and it's going to take you some time for God's grace to change you if you let it. Just like if you want to become Catholic, and before baptism, you're not very nice. After baptism, you're not going to be very nice. It's going to take time for the grace of God, if you let it, to make you into a better person. And so it doesn't make us any more perfect right away than does the first Christians. It takes time. Spiritual growth is a lifelong process. The first Christians had to work through conflicts and selfish tendencies as we all do. We often hear about saints and people, oh, I can't be a saint. I, I, they had special help. You know, they have this great thing going. But we often don't hear about the failures of saints and they were still saints. They had their failures, they had their hardships, and yet, yes, they still made sainthood. The great English bishop, St. Thomas Becket, struggled for his entire life against sins of pride and arrogance. Knowing his weakness in the area, he ordered several of his clergymen to accuse him regularly of any faults they saw in his conduct, out loud. And they did up until the day he died a martyr's death. Can you imagine? You want to become perfect? Tell somebody around you to tell you how bad you are every day when you make a mistake. Then you have to work on it. You can't get mad. Of course, if you have teenagers, you hear that all the time as parents. St. Bogomius was a very good, very holy bishop in the 12th century in Poland. But he wasn't very effective in changing the corrupt clergy. They were stealing money from the church. They had mistresses and children. They were doing all kinds of things. He was unable to change that. In fact, so ineffective that he sought and obtained permission to resign. In modern day America, we had a bishop, Madison back an archbishop, Fulton J. Sheen. He was so bad at administrating the diocese, 
He asked for permission to resign. And now what's happening? All it takes is a ceremony and he's beatified. He's a saint. Or take the example of St. Francis Borgia. That's a guy, by the way. St. Francis has a great worldly prestige as a duke and member of the royal court in 16th century Spain at the height of Spanish time. But he set it all aside to become a Jesuit priest. He soon became known for his holiness and his ability to help sinners come to repentance. But even he had his failures. On one occasion, Francis heard of a young man, notorious for a sinful life, who was stricken with a fatal illness. The saint began by praying for the youth's conversion and then hurried to his side. But the young man wanted nothing to do with religion. Francis prayed again and returned to the dying young man. He held up the crucifix and urged the young man to repent and to call upon God's mercy, but to no avail. The youth turned his face away and died in despair. It's a terrible thing. It happens even to the day priests are called to the deathbed of somebody and they'll say, do you want to go to confession and be anointed? No. And they die without getting the sacraments and without saying, I'm sorry to God. Earth is not heaven. And this is a big problem we have today because people think earth is all it is. Spiritual growth is a lifelong process that includes troubles and failures as well as victories and successes. Becoming a mature Christian, letting God's grace work in and through us, is a lifelong process, both for us as individuals and as a church. People are always criticizing the church for the past. But what they don't realize is the church wasn't created perfectly at one time because it's made of imperfect people. And imperfect people have to learn and grow and spiritually mature. So as the church has gotten older, people have understood more and more the Holy Spirit has gotten through. And so we can look back and say, yeah, that wasn't a good time, but it's all we knew. So in order to interfere with this process, the devil likes to tempt us to spend a lot of time in useless complaining and criticism. We live in a time right now, during these difficult times, we are hearing a lot of this, criticism and complaining. The sign of useless criticism and complaining is when we express our complaints and criticisms to people who have absolutely no power to do anything to improve the situation. Imagine if the Greek-speaking Christians in the first reading had just grumbled to each other and their mistreatment and had never gone to the Twelve Apostles. There'd be no deacons at that time. There'd be no change. They probably would have got up and left the church and then blamed everybody else. The problem would never have been resolved. And the resentment would have festered and led to bitter conflicts and even divisions early on. Likewise, in our parish life, in our family life, in our office life, in our school life, wherever there's a problem, the proper Christian response is not to vent, but to seek a solution. Christians are not called to be whiners. Christian churches are no wine zones. We are called to be winners. And in Christianity, that another word for that is saints. And that means working that we solve our problems, not just wallowing in them with useless complaining and criticism. Whenever we complain and criticize, we are putting ourselves in judgment over others. That feeds our innate tendencies to vanity. It also gives us a sense of power since our criticisms damage other people's reputations. The people we complain to will inevitably have a lower opinion of the people we complain about after they listen to our complaints. People that don't know the situation in the church under the scandal criticize and criticize and complain. And now there's so many people, including Catholics out there, that think the church is the lowest form of life and they don't want part of it. We don't criticize and complain. We make changes and solutions. So Jesus had every right to complain. He had every right to criticize. He had every right to judge. But he didn't. Instead, he was merciful, constructive, patient. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. To become more Christian, mature Christians and wise and joyful Christians, we should follow in his footsteps, practicing mercy, 
being constructive, being patient, being positive, never giving up, and never becoming negative or despondent. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people call my God, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. For all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority, may God's grace enable them to lead with integrity, protecting life from conception through natural doubt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any who are struggling to believe, and those whose faith is weak. May Christ speak to their troubled hearts and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the flu this season, and to COVID-19 this season, for all who are suffering from COVID-19, may the Lord grant them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the souls in purgatory, may they return to the heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know our needs before we ask. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord take the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray, as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, and Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome a passable joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending of your glory as they are claimed. In a similar way, we suffered with sin, and he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and through the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. He may give us an eternal offering to you. We attend an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Corona, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. With this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. We serve Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop. We order bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have summoned before you. Your compassionate and merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, who all are pleasing to you of their passing from this life, your kind admits to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, and we stole in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be you.
led us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Somebody reminded me that this weekend is celebrated Mother's Day. I don't pay attention to these secular holidays. But now that mom is living with me, I have to pay attention to this one. Okay? So we're going to have a special blessing for the mothers and the grandmothers. So we now do this. Remember dads, grandfathers, not for you. Your day is in June. Dear Lord, bless every mother and every grandmother with the finest of your spiritual blessings today. Confirm in her heart and spirit the work of her hands, the love she has so freely given to those children under your care. Validate her work daily so she has no reason to doubt whether she is loved, valued, and cherished in the eyes of her Heavenly Father. Create in her a deep sense of your protection and trust so that worry and fear will disappear as she places her loved ones in your care. Let her know that every prayer she has prayed and every encouraging word she has spoken on behalf of her children or grandchildren has been transformed into sweet, fragrant offerings before your throne. Whisper deep within her spirit the sweet words she longs to hear from you, that nothing can ever separate her from your love. Help her to nestle daily in the promises of your word, standing with faith on the things you declare are true. Let her know that you reward faithfulness, but that true success doesn't lie in her accomplishments or praises. Let her rest in the knowledge that she has done all she can, and that she and those she loves truly belong to you. Bless her with a servant spirit, so she can teach her own joy, her own children, the joy of hearing one day, well done, good and faithful servant. Remove any guilt, false or real. Replace them with your amazing grace and forgiveness. Help her see her children or grandchildren through your eyes, knowing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Calm every doubt and strengthen her confidence in the only one who can bring good out of any situation. Teach her that she cannot meet every need of her child's life, but that you can. Give her wisdom and guidance to train those precious children in your path, and then to leave the results to you, Lord. Help her love without limitations, to pray without ceasing, and to live without regrets. Bless her with such a sweet dependency on you that she will acknowledge her inadequacies, yet recognize and accept the reward of praise, and your sense of pleasure in having her as your own beloved child. Where prayers may, not, may still seem unanswered and dreams are not realized, open her eyes to see beyond this world to a hope that never disappoints, and a father who will never leave or abandon her. Give her courage to persevere even in the most difficult moments of her life. Bless her with honesty, integrity, and a playfulness that shows her children she is human, yet unswerving in her desire to know you. Let her joy be contagious, let her passion be pure, and let her life overflow with all the blessings she deserves on special days like today and on every day of her life. And Lord, we ask you to give them blessing in a special way in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It wasn't for you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Sing May Michael be our angel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the one of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy.